All right, so we're gonna look through some more boxes of stuff that came in the mail today uh, from uh, for some more rec Record Store Day Black Friday stuff. I've been just opening stuff as it comes in, and um, all right, let's do it. Uh, if you saw the tweet earlier, then you know that this box here is from Light in the Attic Records, and uh, let's open it up. Recycling. This is one of these kind of pull tab type. <laughs> well, I guess it's hard to get open. So we'll see what's in here. All right. The first thing in this box is their compilation blend land yap sessions that's very nice and it's um uh if you're familiar with the aquarium drunkard blog these these are things that they i think actually commissioned these tracks and they are it's it's all covers and it has i know there's something cool inside so i'm going to open it up uh, i think i mentioned yesterday that one of the releases had a uh, somebody was covering of montreal well here of Montreal is covering um, a song that the Kingston Trio made famous. So let us see what we have here. I believe it's red. No. All right, gold. Gold vinyl. Both sides are gold, of course. I'm going to hold the. There we go. Let's see. I'm... Pause it right here if you want to want to see the. Um, there's the whole track listing for you, and I think there's something else in here that was supposed to be. Yes, indeed. So there, it's a little four-page thing here. Okay, so we have details on uh, what looks like why it, wh why everybody chose the songs they covered. Uh, of course, your typical stuff. The thanks, but one of the things I want to. Oh, this is nice. This is cool. The, there's a thank you section, and the sales staff, even the sales staff at Light in the Attic, is thanked. That's that's pretty cool. That doesn't always happen. Um, and I also want to point out there's a there's an indie record store connection here as well because the um, liner notes here, written by see this guy here, Jason Woodbury. I, I I kind of first got to know him just as like a I think on Twitter just as like you know a guy who knows a lot about music and uh, so then I, I later found out that um, and here's the thing that makes a whole lot of sense of course of course he works at an independent at one of the best independent record stores around he works at, at Zia if you're familiar with Zia Records in the southwest um, one of my favorite favorite stores so it's pretty cool that um, it's not surprising that a guy who can write really good liner notes would be working at a place like that all right, now this is a lot of people. Um, a lot, a lot, a lot of people were excited about this, the um, Chinatown soundtrack. And I should mention there is a special cover for the Record Store Day Black Friday, um, and a special, special gold wax. But there's also a black vinyl version with the same audio. So if you miss out on this really cool version then you can still get the um you can you can you should be able to get get the regular version in fact uh places that do pre-orders will you can pre-order that one now just to cover yourself so what i want to show you though is let's look at this again i think we've got the same gold wax yes gold vinyl but if look look closely can you see there's some modeling in there that's pretty nice um, and of course, it's different. Going to be different on every record, so you've got a unique record here. Um, and okay, limited to 2,500 copies, by the way, according to the sticker. And you get oh yeah yeah yeah. See, this is awesome. You get a poster of the artwork. So you know, flatten that out, um, and you can hang that up or frame it. It looks really great. It feels like there's something else in here. Is there a download card? No. 
No, but this is awesome. And if you're um, familiar, you know, just an interesting story about the uh, about this soundtrack. It Jerry Goldsmith, who already uh, had was was well known as a soundtrack composer. Uh, was actually the second person to do a soundtrack for this. The first one just didn't cut it, so with 10 days to go, uh, Goldsmith came in and uh, uh, what did he do? He wrote it. He, 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 they, they, he wrote it with only 10 days to go, so that's amazing. And, it, and what's funny is that how, you know, it's just inspiration strikes because he, um, you know, recorded one of the a really famous soundtracks that's really great, and uh, well, you'll have you'll have to hear it. It's 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 around. now now. What's awesome is just before I started this, another box of stuff showed up, and this one's thicker. So let's see what's in here. I think this is from the Boston area. Let's see. Okay, safely packaged between several sheets of. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh good. Okay, you're gonna like this. This is this is cool. This is this is why you watch these videos so you can see things like that. There you go. Picture disc, UGK. Um, right now, you might re remember this song was uh, was nominated for a Grammy, and uh, Outcast is a guest on it. And you also have check this out. It's shaped like the the vinyl itself is shaped like the state of Texas. Um, and this is at least, there, oh nice, this is at least the third state-shaped record that I can think of from Record Store Day. We had 21 Pilots and uh, St. Paul and the Broken Bones both did them from for their state. Ooh, oh good, 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 uh, great. Okay, so this is um, a Nigerian rock collection and uh, if I remember correctly, this is hand silk screened. You can kind of feel, uh, feels like it anyway. Um, and it's, it's, it's a double record. Groovy sounds from southeastern Nigeria, 1972 to 1982. Oh, and it comes with, look at this, Coleman Razor's Guide to Enjoyment in the Old Cross River State. Oh. Oh yeah. Oh good. Oh, this is nice. Okay, so this is a this is a catalog from the label. Um, who, if you're not familiar with them, do all kinds of, of cool stuff. Um, I think it's mostly from uh, from Africa, but um, that's great. That, that you'll you'll probably find a bunch of other things that you, that you want in there. And uh, which is one of the oh yeah, look at this. That is pretty. And uh, I. So if you're familiar with Fela Kuti, this this is not going to sound so much like that. It's it's a, a bunch of different people, different ethnic groups. And the last one in here, oh, this is nice. It's got one of those um, sort of modified, like an OB sleeve there. So James Brown's Funky People, Volume 3. So he had a label, right, called um, Funky Records, I think. Uh, see, this is when you're just winging it. Um, anyway, it's just a bunch of stuff that, that he released on his thing, on his own label. So you've got, uh, you'd expect a song by him, uh, Fred Wesley and the JBs, um, and then a bunch of other folks who you might not be quite as familiar with. I'm certainly not, uh, didn't, didn't get that super famous as, as James Brown did, but, um, how many Godfathers do you really want? So, uh, Okay, let's take a look here, uh, just to see inside. It's a gatefold, folks, so I just want to see what, how the inside looks. Okay, oh, this is actually glued on, but you can probably pull it off if you want. Oh, nice. Okay, great. So you get kind of a silver metallic, or actually it's just gray. Um, minor notes for every track, which is a great thing. And let's see. Little tight there. Oh, there you go. There's the People logo. Maybe it was called People Records. Um, geez, I can't recall. I'll have this right by the time I do the big, the big, big record and black vinyl. But it looks, uh, looks super clean. Looks good. 
Um, all right, so if you've got any questions, uh, I can't actually see what's if anybody left any questions on the on the stream, but if you have any, just type them in. I'll check in a couple minutes and see if you need any other any other additional information. And um, all right, keep keep watching. We'll see you on the twenty fifth.